So yeah, on that on that uh, tune there, he's got it all kind of going on uh, the blues and uh, uh, you hear a lot of the you know the people we've been talking about and playing so far. You're hearing a little bit of all that in there. Uh, he's like bridging Count Basie to Red Garland, right? It's got the same upbeat uh, linear thing that Red Garland does. It's got the spare classic Basie chords and and one note thing. You know, Basie has the, perhaps with with the exception of maybe a, a handful of other guys, the greatest time feel of all time, which is really saying something for all those brothers who have great time feels. And here he is, you know, as a standout. And here's Jimmy Rolls holding his own uh, swinging as hard as Red Garland and Count Basie. So, you know, he earned his his, his seat at the table with, with Billie Holiday and, and, all, and all those singers, right? Because they know what they're getting. Now, he also has the fuzzy chord thing. And he has some of, uh, when he did some of those glissandi, those are kind of harmonically original. He's not tipping his hat at some harmony that somebody else done. It sounded like his own, his own harmonic innovations at times there too. So well, that's covering a lot of ground. So he, you know, masterful. Yeah. And also something we hadn't talked about, uh, the fifties, the birth of the cool, this, this, this sounds to me like, you know, that cool sound, you know? Well, the record birth of the cool, you know, like it's like buying or Ornette's. And if you want to get to know some free jazz, so then you buy Ornette Coleman's album called free jazz, which is much more experimental than his quartet records. His quartet records are like, they're like bird disciples. So it's like bebop gone into the sixties and with some freedom and some uh, more ex expressiveness. Whereas the album Free Jazz is like a wild experiment of polytonality where you have two quartets just wailing away over each other. It's like a Jackson Pollock painting, which is on the cover of the record, right? It's just a mess. Right. So if you wanted to investigate the birth of the cool because the cool sound or whatever, then you're going to get the Miles Davis album called Birth of the Cool, which is this like very sonorous kind of mellow, uh, highly arranged uh, strange instrumentation uh, record where they're playing hip bebop, but they're playing it with like euphoniums and tuba and playing very light. And the chords are very complicated, moving around very quickly and a lot of Gil Evans style, uh, innovative new big band techniques. Because big band was still a huge deal back then. You know, this kind of quartet playing was still relatively new. And uh, whereas looking back now, you just kind of, see that big band was was not going to make it but the, as far as like this so when we were talking about the harmonic in, innovations that's where it takes us to the next guy claire fisher and i was a little bit asleep on him too of course i knew that pensativa was his composition and uh, you know he's got several other compositions in the canon when i started doing a little homework on it and getting some more recordings and checking it out further you've come to find out that he's a legendary arranger but also a really badass piano player with an excellent feel and a, a harmonic innovation that is Herbie Hancock's biggest influence. And Herbie will tell you that when you read interviews with Herbie Hancock, he talks about Claire Fisher all the time. And so um, I came at it from a different angle, but then when it was very validating, when I was like, oh, and then when you check the music out itself, you see, yes, that the harmony, I mean, Herbie does, other things to it but it's his like a starting point of modernism for him and uh the arrangements were the high low singers which is uh, looms very large in herbie and other people's harmonic uh, uh um, advancement and it's a little bit fi like 50s uh, george jetson kind of singing which doesn't always uh i have sometimes wrangle with it a little bit myself personally because it's uh, texturally you know, it sounds like what the Beach Boys were listening to and that kind of singing doesn't always, for a lot of people, this is like some of the most thrilling music imaginable. And for me, I always wrangle with that kind of vocal style, but you got to give it up for the, what he's doing harmonically. And then when you just go ahead and listen to him play piano, that we're all set because this is a master. Yeah. And for me, he was the kind of the second revelation of uh, nice. I, I didn't know much about him. And, uh, and so, yeah, hearing him uh, perform was uh, uh, illuminating to say the least. So let's check out uh, Claire Fisher playing a composition called Strayhorn. <laughs> 